Hi everyone, I'm Chef Edwin. Welcome to Anchor Food Professionals Masterclass. In the world of day three, innovation is the key. Consumers are constantly looking for something new. As pastry chefs, we must constantly explore ways of creating something new from our daily ingredients. Today, I would like to share with you a few of my creations using cream cheese as the main ingredient. First of all, we have this pistachio cream cheese Danish roll. Venasori is an important part of pastry that requires strong foundation in lamination to bring out the beautiful crispy layers. I use pistachio to add in a nutty aroma to the cream cheese, creating a nutty crunch in a savory sweet pastry. Next, this is the yuzu apple cheese beer taught in my previous masterclass. It's pairing cream cheese mousse with yuzu curd and fresh Fuji apple chutney on top of a sapri breton. Another from my previous masterclass is this strawberry cheese tart. Tart being the basic of pastry, I like to show how a basic pastry can be a beautiful creation. Using wild strawberries flavored tart base, layered with almond, topped with a thin layer of strawberry marmalade, finishing the big cheesecake with a layer of red glaze. Who say cheesecake can't be glazed? Cream cheese can also be used in fusion food. If we think creatively, Presenting Western strudel in a Chinese dim sum using caramelized bananas with chunks of cream cheese and hazelnut cream as filling. Finally, this is the modern shoe pastry tube. It's what I want to bring you through today. It's not your usual round or oblong shaped shoe pastry. Reading it is a lime infused with ivory chocolate ganache. Topping it with a cream cheese doom and a refreshing mango passion confit. Finishing with a lemon glaze. Excited? Let's go! Okay, so we'll be doing the shoe pastry tube over here. I will add in the milk, water, butter, sugar, and salt. Okay, so you boil this mixture. Okay, so once it's boiled, reduce the fire and add in the flour. So I'm going to cook this mixture for about 3 minutes. So after it has been incorporated, I will on the flame. Okay, so you cook about 3 minutes, then you can see the, the shoe paste is not sticking to the, the pot. At this moment, it's ready. So off the flame. Once it's ready, double zip into a mixer. Okay, so I mix until about 60 degrees before I add in my eggs. This is very important because if you are adding, if the temperature is too high, the eggs will actually cook. Okay, so after you have mixed well, I will actually uh, do a scrape to make sure the, the bottom and the sides of the bowl are even. So once your shoe paste is done, you will have a very shiny, uh, shiny shoe paste as you can see. After of which, I will deposit into a piping bag. So I have prepared uh, some rings that I will pipe my shoe, shoe paste into. So this is a cutter of about 4cm diameter and 4.5cm uh, height. So what I'll do is uh, I'm using a seal pack to help assist the, the rise of the shoe path inside. I'll pipe roughly about one third of the, of the ring. Of course you can also uh, explore different uh, different uh, rings that you are you have desired of different sizes but just to make sure need to make sure that uh, you are baking a shoe puff so you have, need to have uh, enough uh, airflow for the steam to rise for the shoe puff so after I have uh, piped about one third of the, the ring using another soup pan mat I will actually cover the top and then I will cover with a tray so as you can see this this way of baking you will have uh, air circulation around the whole shoe uh, cream puff so uh, it allows the steam to escape so after of this I will actually uh, put into a combi oven to bake at 170 degrees for about 30 minutes so after baking you can see after the tray being put on top remove the soup pack you can see a very level uh, shoe puff cylinder so after cool for about 30 minutes I will move for the ring Slowly. 
After of which, I will insert the hole at the base. And I'll set this aside later for the lime uh, chantilly. So now we will be doing the lime white chocolate whipped ganache. So I'll be adding the cream, trimoline, glucose, and lime zest. I'm using Anchor Chef Classic Whipping Cream. As you can see, I'm zesting lime zest into my mixture. And this uh, cream is very good because it's acid stable. I personally like this cream. Why? It's because it's uh, whipped stable and cooked stable. So later, I'm going to cook a ganache with uh, this cream. And you can see it yields a very smooth uh, consistency as a result. Okay, so I will boil this mixture. While waiting, I will have the white chocolate in a, in a container. I will add the cocoa butter and also the gelatin sheets. After boil, I will off the flame. Add this boil mixture into the white chocolate, gelatin and cocoa butter mixture. So after mixing a while, I will use the help of a hand blender to emulsify this mixture. This is very important uh, or the use of a hand blender because you, have, you are adding fat into chocolate. So if you do not blend it, the cocoa butter will actually uh, have the fat coming out of your mixture after you cool this mixture. After this uh, mixture has been incorporated, you will add in the cold cream. So after of which, you will blend uh, in the cold cream too. The very important part, using a cling wrap, we press on the surface of the, the mixture. This is uh, to prevent a layer of skin from forming on top of your lime whipped chocolate ganache. So over this, uh, chill into the chiller for about overnight to let the ganache set before whipping. Okay, so this is the lime white chocolate whipped ganache that I've pre-done and rest overnight. Then I'll deposit inside the mixer. So what I'm doing, I'm introducing uh, aeration inside the whipped chocolate ganache to give it a very light uh, texture. So uh, I'm going to on on a medium speed until the cream is whipped. Okay, so after whipping, you can see the form changes from a liquid stage to something light. With a piping bag, I deposit whipped ganache inside. So I will generously fill the shoe paste tube. So you just do a rotation uh, when you are piping and make sure every every uh, ends of the shoe path has the filling. As you pipe full, you can you can feel the shoe paste getting heavier. I will chew this shoe path inside the chiller for about half an hour before we do the assembly. So we will be going to the third recipe of the day, mango passion curd. So over here, I will add the mango puree, passion puree. And over here, I have the eggs and sugar. So I will boil this mixture. So the reason why you are mixing the eggs with your sugar is to temper the eggs. If not, your hot liquid will actually cook your eggs straight away. So you just boil this mixture. After boiling, I will add inside the egg and sugar mixture slowly. You can actually divide into three parts. In this way of cooking, you won't actually cook the egg because you are tempering the temperature of the, the hot puree. So after it is smooth, add back into the pot and what I will do is I will cook until 82 degrees. So at this point of time, my white chocolate is over here. I will add in the gelatin sheets. You can slowly see the mixture getting thickened. Always stir from the center of the mixture to the outside. I will deposit inside the white chocolate and the gelatin. I will just add in a soft butter. So with the help of a hand blender, same, you need some emulsification. So I'm uh, actually blending the, the fat into the, the curd. Okay, so at this point of time when you blend, make sure you use the blender wisely. You can actually insert half of it and do some blending. You do not incorporate too much bubbles inside your mixture because you want a very smooth, uh, nice uh, mango passion curd. I will deposit the mango passion curd into uh, semi spears, and if you want to know the diameter, is about three cm. So just fill it, uh, fill it full. So after I fill the the mango passion curd, I will freeze this dome uh, in the freezer for about two hours. So we will go to the next uh, recipe, the cream cheese mousse. So over here, I have cream cheese over here. I'm using Anchor cream cheese. Put in the mixer with the cake bitter attachment. It will take quite some time, maybe about uh, two to three minutes. Just you need to have a very smooth uh, cream cheese before you start incorporating other ingredients. So I will start mixing. 
Okay, just a tip for everyone. Just thing you take note when before you actually use cream cheese, you can thaw it at a uh, air conditioned room at, at 25 degrees for about three hours before usage. That will actually cut short a lot of our production time and uh, it will help you to have a very uh, smooth uh, cream cheese. If not, you will take a very long time to actually cream the cream cheese. So the next step, I'm doing a uh, sugar syrup. So I have sugar over here, water, egg yolks, and icing sugar in the mixer bowl. Okay, so I'll whisk this up while cooking the sugar syrup. Why I'm doing this is because when you cook the sugar syrup to 1 to 1 degrees, the heat is very high and you will actually cook the eggs. So you have to use the a whisking motion to actually prevent the eggs from cooking. So now I'm cooking my sugar syrup to 1 to 1. Of course, you can use the help of a thermometer. So one thing to take note when you are cooking sugar and water, not to, uh, you can do a rafter but not to induce too much uh, friction into your syrup. Because when you induce a uh, friction into your syrup, you will actually crystallize the, the sugar. Okay, so the syrup has reached one to one. So now I'll gradually whisk my eggs while I add in my sugar syrup. Once you have seen the mixture uh, double in volume, you can remove. So at this point of time, I will add in my cream cheese. I'll mix on medium to just incorporate the cream cheese into the party bomb. Okay, so at this point of time, just give the, the mixture a last grip to make sure that the mixture is smooth and continue uh, mixing for another minute. Okay, so we are done. So I will transfer this to a bowl and I'll whip my whipped cream. Add uh, 300 grams of uh, Anchor Chef Classic Whipping Cream and I'll whip to uh, semi semi-consistency, which is a soft pick. Using a whisk attachment, I'm going to introduce a aeration inside my cream. Okay, it's always uh, good to whip uh, cream at uh, around 4 to 6 degrees because being at this temperature when it's cold, it's uh, easier to whip up. If not, you will have a slightly rough texture when you whip uh, the whipping cream. So I will start whipping to soft pick. So what I'm uh, reaching is soft pick for this. This is the desired consistency that I want to reach. I have already a pot of uh, hot water over here. What I will do is, I will add a little bit of cream inside the gelatin. Always remember when you soak a uh, gelatin leaf, you have to soak in ice water. I add a little bit of whipped cream and I put on a bain marine to just melt the gelatin. By adding a little bit of whipped cream to the gelatin, it actually stops and halts the, the setting process later when you are folding a cream cheese uh, mixture. Okay. So I'm done. What I will do is I will fold these three mixture together. I have the cream cheese party bomb mixture over here, whipped cream, gelatin mix. So what I will do is I will fold the gelatin mix into the party bomb mixture. So I will just add a little bit into the gelatin first. I will pour the rest of it inside. Okay, lastly, I'll fold in the whipped cream. This soft pick texture is actually perfect for uh, the cream cheese mousse. So I will just add half of it inside first. Then I'll add the rest of it inside. Very light, so this is the texture that we want to uh, achieve. So you can see this is a semi spear of about 4.2 cm. Over at my right is the ma mango passion curd that I done earlier with smaller diameter of about 3 cm. When you feel the piping bag, don't be too greedy and feel, feel it full. Later you will have a very hard time uh, piping. So what I'll do is, I'll fill the mold, about half of it. Using an anchor, I'll brush the sides to make sure that the, the mousse actually covers the whole area of the spear and you won't have uh, air bubbles in between. If your folding is right, your cream cheese mousse can actually hold quite some time without setting. That's why the reason I, I'm mixing a little bit of whipped cream into the gelatin. I'll insert my mango passion curd halfway through. So after uh, inserting the mango passion curd, I will cover with the cream cheese mousse so that you have an inner uh, filling of a mango passion curd inside the cream cheese mousse. Okay, so what I will do is, I will level up. So you can have a small bowl to uh, actually keep the excess. So I will freeze this uh, in the freezer for around uh, 4 hours. 
or if you have a blast freezer, you can accelerate the, the freezing uh, process with about half an hour. So we will come to the last recipe of the day and we will be doing the thing that always uh, people look forward to, glaze. So I will be showing a lemon glaze here. So over here I have whipped cream, milk, yellow sugar powder, and fresh lemon zest. So the reason I'm, I'm adding uh, fresh lemon zest because I want to infuse the zesty, refreshing feel of the lemon inside this uh, lemon glaze. So I will follow by sugar and glucose. Before I boil this mixture, 50 grams of milk and corn flour. I will mix these two both together first. So I will boil this mixture. After boiling, I will uh, add the corn flour mixture into the pot. So always uh, take note when you are adding corn flour into any recipes, be it uh, pastry cream or, or any curds, you have to boil the mixture to activate the corn flour. As you can see, the mixture comes to a boil. At this moment, I'll add a little bit of the hot mixture into the corn flour mixture. Now off the flame first. Pour the rest of the corn flour mix into the pot. Put on the heat again. So I'll just wait for it to boil again. Okay, at this stage, I off the flame and I add in my pre-soaked gelatin sheets. So I melt my gelatin sheets and I'll sieve away the lemon zest. As you can see, this the lemon zest is added just for that flavor. But you do not want that zest to affect your glazing later on. Using a hand blender, you blend and make sure the mixture is uh, smooth before you chew it overnight. One thing you share when you are using a hand blender, always make sure that you do not uh, on on very high speed because you will actually cause bubbles in your glaze. That is what you want to avoid. I will add a layer of clean film on top to prevent it from causing a layer and second to remove bubbles. So I will store this uh, overnight to let the glaze rest before use. Over this, I have already pre-rest overnight the lemon glaze. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, blend it and make sure it's free of bubbles. I actually microwave this uh, glaze to a consistency. I would say if you want a specific temperature, it's about 35 to 40. If you want a thicker, thicker glaze, you can actually bring down the temperature. I'm going to uh, combine all the bubbles into the center of the hand blender. Okay, so over here is my cream cheese mousse that I've already uh, freeze. So i mold. Always do not waste too much time when you are more uh, mousse. You have to glaze within uh, 10 to 20 seconds because why? When there's water vapor forming on top of your mousse, uh, your glaze will actually fall off. So as you can see, it's very thin and a very nice bright yellow lemon glaze. So what I will do is I will do a bit of cleaning. This is one technique that I want to share with everyone because after, always when you glaze, you have very a lot of excess. So what you can do is you can use the help of a chopping board or something flat to actually remove the excess glaze. So you have glazed dough and we will move to the chocolate decoration before the assembly. Okay, I've already uh, pre-melted some dark chocolate. So I'm showing you a very fast way that you can uh, temper your own chocolates. So the chocolate I'm using is converter. Because the table is cool, so the, it will actually accelerate the cooling process. In the chocolate world, we call it tempering. Once you temper the chocolate, it starts getting a bit thick. So you can actually use the help of a thermometer. It's about 26 to 27. So my chocolate is tempered. So you see in this way, you have a much cleaner uh, way of tempering the chocolate by not messing your workplace. Using your anchor, just spread it across, make sure it's thin. Because uh, you do not want a very thick chocolate. Make sure you spread it evenly. I take off the plastic sheet below. You can see the, the first shine. When it has become a little bit matte, it's almost ready to cut. So as you can see, the chocolate is semi-set. So I'll use a cutter to cut right down. Make sure you cut right down into the chocolate. So what I will do is I will overturn this uh, piece of chocolate. I will leave it to crystallize at 24 degrees for about 12 hours. Okay, so here is our crystallized chocolate. Tear off the, the top plastic. You, as you can see, once uh, you have tempered at the correct uh, temperature, you, you have very uh, shiny uh, chocolate curvature. Okay, so now comes to the exciting part of the day, which is the assembly. This is the 
some left uh, whipped ganache, tuck a little bit, just a little bit to stick the chocolate decoration. Stick onto the center. Thank you everyone. We have come to the end of our lesson. I hope everyone enjoyed the creations that I shared with everyone. I really hope to see your amazing creations in the future. See you!